Hello, everybody. Good morning from beautiful Bali today. It's a nice sunny day and it's a good day to answer some Q&A. Uh, we're starting a new segment in our Facebook page. If you're joining me here or watching the replay later on, uh, once a month, I'll be coming here live to answer any of your burning questions around corporate transition, um, starting a business or a side hustle and doing great work in the world. So this community, as much as the, the name of the company here and my company is Screw the Cubicle, a big mission of what we try to do here at Screw the Cubicle is not just about leaving your cubicle and lying on a hammock somewhere doing nothing. Yes, I love the beach as much as you do, but this community here is really for people who want to create great work so that they don't feel like they have to escape that work and they're not building these boundaries of a cubicle, which may not be a physical cubicle, might be the way you've been doing work, what are uh, the things you choose to work on that doesn't make work feel like work, right? It doesn't mean that you're not doing things to work, but you're actually doing things that you like, you have interest in, and you feel that you're contributing uh, into the world in an impactful and purposeful way. So if you're here joining me live, do say hello uh, at the comments uh, or participate in our next Q&A by um, submitting any of your questions. If any of today's Q&A prompts questions for you and you feel inspired to ask your question, please do. By commenting below, we gather these questions and make sure that we help answer them um, in our once a month uh, Q&A session. Uh, so there's two questions that I'll be answering today. Uh, the first one comes uh, from Brenda, and I think it's a great question for anyone who is a, a multi-passionate person or someone that's good at everything, uh, a great high quality problem to have. Uh, Brenda's question today is, how do I know what I'm passionate about? Um, I have various skills and have been good at all of them. So how do I choose what to pursue for work out of the nine to five? Thanks, Brenda, for your question. And I think this is a question that I get all the time about uh, passion. Uh, and my thoughts around passion is that it's a, it's a really big word. It's a really good buzzword for people to use about follow your passion and you know follow things that you're passionate about. Uh, but the problem with the word passion is that sometimes it feels like this huge Gandhi moment that's supposed to hit you in your head and you're supposed to wake up in the morning and say, that's exactly what I'm supposed to do for the rest of my life. And that's a huge pa uh, question to answer. Uh, and my feelings around passion is that passion is an emotion, it's a feeling, it's something you cultivate, it's something you nurture, it's something you create, actually, that you're responsible for creating, uh, which comes in various forms in your life. You could be passionate about your family, passionate about travel, passionate about your creativity. And passion is actually really, to be honest, infused in everything that you pay attention to, that you focus on, that you put time on, uh, that is also beyond your career and your business and your work. So the bigger question I like to ask when it comes to pursuing what work you should start out of the nine to five, you, if you were to quit your job or start a business that's meaningful to you, uh, is what deep interests do you have and how can you contribute to a cause or something of meaning for you that you see in the world that you might be frustrated by, that you think, man, not on my watch. You know, my coach Pam Slim used to say, what's the thing that makes you wake up in the morning and you say, over my dead body, not on my watch, right? And these are things that you care about. And sometimes that's not easy to identify uh, because we, in our regular nine to five, you know, routine world, we can sort of do very similar things every time, right? We wake up, we eat the same, pretty much the same breakfast. We go to work, we go to the gym, we see the same people, we do the same job every single day. It's really hard to get out of that routine of knowing what it is that you have deep interest in that's beyond this identity that you have in your corporate job. So sometimes what, what I like to recommend is instead of actually trying to answer that question directly, go and actually start doing things, things that used to bring you joy or have brought you joy and do more of it just to get yourself in the vicinity of that feeling of passion. So if you love salsa dancing, you love singing, you love writing poetry, you love writing and journaling, go and do more of that and get that sort of engine, right? And uh, the feel for the feeling of passion to even activate in your life first before you start to even know what are things you're passionate about. And then have a think about causes. Causes is a really great way to find passion in your work, right? Um, 
what are your deep interests? Is you're reading about it all the time. You're subscribing to writers or bloggers or influencers that talk about this all the time. You see it potentially happening in your community, things that you feel that are unfair or things that you feel that you want to uh, help with. And then you can think of your various skills and that's great to have a suite of skills. I like to look at your skill sets you've accumulated in corporate, you know, wherever it is that you've gained experience as sort of like a little bit like a tool belt that you carry around your waist at all times. And you sort of whip out the hammer or the, the, the wrench or whatever it is that makes sense for you to utilize at that moment in time. And when you think about cause, it's about looking at all your skills and which skills are actually the strongest and that you have deep interest in to contribute to this purpose, this ripple effect of um, a, a cause that you believe in. So for example, I have a, a, a client that has um, huge interest in psychology, right? She loves to know the way people think. She loves to dissect the way people think, how she thinks. You know, she reads, she goes to every Tony Robbins events and she reads all sorts of things around the brain and psychology. But one of her very paid skill set that was in corporate and agencies for many years was digital marketing, right? And she goes, how do I, you know, do I do email marketing? Do I do SEO? Do I do web design? You know, and that's just, again, your tools in your tool belt. That's actually not the important bit. The important bit is what what is the, the the mission that you would like your work to contribute to, and one and that deep interest of psychology, understanding how people transform, what causes people to behave differently. How would she utilize that deep interest with the skills she has in marketing and digital marketing to be able to have a different conversation in that industry? And that does not mean sometimes that she changes course of her business or the thing that she knows how to do, but she might approach that message of marketing and communication and relationship building a little bit more holistically and really focus her unique difference on psychology, how to understand the psychology of how people do the things they don't want to do, how to help people do things they don't want to do, and infuse that into the way business market to that audience or the, to their consumers, that buyer psychology. And that's that little tweak sometimes in using an, using an existing skill set Infusing a really new way of approach based on deep interest can be an interesting way of looking at what it is that you're passionate about that may not cause you to have to throw your entire career down the toilet. It might be a shift in perspective, shift in how you approach solving that problem now, or picking a new audience to work with that you're more passionate to help, right? And ultimately, Brenda, to answer this question, you will have to test things out. It's like trying on a new coat. We've been in our corporate jobs for so long that it's really hard to see our identity and our value beyond exactly what we've known how to do or what the title on our, at our desk is. You know, so sometimes we have to try on these different coats of delivery of our skills, right? Maybe if you, uh, you know, for this, the same client I was working with, if, you know, working with coaches or working with self-development people because of that psychology piece that's so important to her, maybe a change in how she actually is uh, passionate about her skill versus who she used to help before, which could have been e-commerce products and things she could, could do, but isn't having a huge passion for uh, on a human level, right? And that can absolutely change everything. But the key message here, Brenda, is give it an experiment. Test it out while you're still working full time. Just find clients even for free to work with and test out how you might work differently and who you will like to work with. And that answer again can be a little bit clearer for you. Okay, thanks Brenda for that question. The last question we have is from Heather. Uh, Heather asks, I would like to know, uh, I would like to know how you know what to prioritize when you're starting your side hustle. It's easy to get distracted, but there's a lot of uh, a lot that needs to be done. Yep, I understand. Uh, do you focus more on the money making tasks? Is it more on the creation of content? Uh, more on networking and getting your name or business known? What's more important? Now, I know everything can feel, uh, thank you, Heather, for that question, by the way. Um, I know it can feel really overwhelming to want to do all the things, you know, and actually, you know, it will feel like everything is really important and everything is important, but I think there can be um, a, a, a more meaningful sequence of activities that you can focus on, Heather, uh, that is actually going to help you get to more of these things getting done more effectively, um, which I'm going to be advising you on now. Now, money making is obviously, uh, and you know, being paid to do what you do is important to be rewarded, right? And to have income outside of your nine to five job for sure. Uh, however, to be able to get on what are the money making tasks that doesn't drain you, 
doesn't cause you to be frustrated at your work. Uh, doesn't make you feeling like, holy shit, I've just created myself another job I don't want to go to, which is like the worst feeling in the world when you quit your job. Uh, that's the more important bit. It's like, how do you actually focus more on how do you want to make money that is also going to give you fulfillment? And if you don't know what that fulfillment is, you're going to have to take a bit of inventory check on how it is that, like, you, what's your best way of delivering your skills? Some people are better as executors, right? They're They're the ones that will... Um, do and design things like the website, right? They're the ones that are the OBMs for business owners. They're the ones that implement things for other people. And some people, some people are more big picture thinkers. They're more of a strategist. They're more of sort of an organization planner. You know, they advise, they coach, they mentor, uh, they help people do things uh, sometimes on an intangible level, right? Therapeutically at times and help people do things without executing things for them. You know, they're more strategists uh, in the mix. And then some people, well, their model is more their connectors. They're actually people that plan experiences like events and conferences and they gather and curate people that will help do that work more easily. They're the maestro of an experience. So we have to sort of find out Heather, where it is that you fit in the role. Like what, like day to day when you get up and work with clients, what would you, how, what's the style of working that best suits your personality? that best suits your uh, way of um, the easiest way for you to work. Right. Uh, and also, you know, in, if you look at your business idea, making sure that what you, the activities, right? Like not just the concept, but really the activities and the work, the day to day that you're doing really does coincide, right. With the style that you would like to work. And then, Knowing how to make money is about knowing how to give value. So you also have to make sure that your side hustle idea, right, is actually giving value to other people and giving it in a way that is going to be uh, that people are seeking for. Right. It could be something that might be in your head that you think is valuable. But the most important bit is to do that market research. Again, what I was telling uh, Brenda previously is try on those different coats of helping different types of people or different styles of helping, you know, in order to really know which way is going to be the style that I would like to do it. Because money making is about giving tremendous value to an active need that people are seeking for. Right. And if you're not sure about that yet, then very likely you, you should not be doing content creation or marketing or anything until you get that right and really know your voice behind that value. Right. What do you really want to say about the transformation that you create with your work, the values your business stands for? You know, so if you are a social media manager or you're a marketing strategist, don't just talk about marketing generally. What do you want to talk about when it comes to marketing? What does marketing even mean to you, for example, right? That's going to allow you to, again, impact differently and be heard uniquely in the market so that when you do things like content creation or running a training or creating, you know, freebies on your site or creating your next blog post, you're really clear about how you're going to talk about these topics and what are the topics of interest to you and get some boundaries on your work. Right. That's also another thing before you do content creation and start to talk about your work into the public world is really see what are the three core things that uh, your business stands for that you want to actually focus on solving the most. So using the marketing example again, you know, marketing is too vague. It's too big. Even social media is too big. Right. So we really want to talk about what it is that you're trying to change in that industry. So some people will uh, tackle social media in forms of community building. Right. So another social strategist will do more about starting better conversations and being to engage an audience in a, in a, a more meaningful way. Another one's about being found more easily or building a visibility strategy for business owners in their social media. Where do you stand in that niche of your industry? And what are those topics that really, again, align with that value, align with those things that you are non-negotiable for you to talk about and what you care to talk about? And then you can plan more of your content creation around that. But definitely spend that time to do that. And again, that's not going to feel perfect. It's going to feel good enough. It's going to feel writer. Is that a word? writer than yesterday or the week before the month before when you talk, you thought about this particular thought process and then give it a try again, you know, try to put out some content and test that, you know, talk to business owners about a different way of doing things differently in a style or approach or perspective that you believe in and offer to help them reach that goal in a small amount of time and see how you do in your, in your interest in going there. And then lastly, with networking and getting your name out there, the more that you go out there and help people, <coughs> excuse me, 
And the more that you create content in the digital world, of course, the easier you, uh, it is for you to get found. But creating content and using, you know, Google's, the Google engine and your website and your blog to get found is a long game. And we always forget that we were like, hey, I put out a blog the other day and no one looked at it. Uh, yeah, it takes a while to get an audience and it takes consistency and incremental effort uh, to start getting your blog found. I mean, it took me probably a good six months when I first started Screw the Cubicle to finally not have to post so many times to remind people I've written this blog post and have the amazing engine of Google uh, that, that, you know, to pick up the keywords of my blog. So in the beginning, the best way sometimes of networking and getting your name out there is to start actually going out there and talking to physical people you know. Start with your community. Start with joining co-working spaces in your city. Start with attending meetups. Host a meetup. Start with people you know and connect and invite people to speak with you and help them genuinely on a much more manual level. And I know that's not a sexy answer, but actually it's the most organic and longer term and more sustainable answer to building better relationships anyway. And actually a really realistic answer is actually looking at the assets and looking at the people and the social equity that you've already built and leveraging that. And so if you really take some time instead of trying to just, you know, <clears throat> get your SEO in order and write a bunch of blogs all the time, is sometimes the more effective way is actually handpicking people that you want to work with and, you know, have a discovery call with them help them with something in their business right away. And that's a, a better chance sometimes of landing a customer than actually trying to hack your way into being found digitally when you're just starting out. So if you actually look at your contacts, old colleagues where, you know, schools you used to, used to teach at, friends of friends, uh, communities you used to be in groups or meetups or associations or memberships that you're a part of, you'll start to know that there's actually quite a number of people in your network that could actually be very much in alignment with the work that you're choosing to do today and offer to help them in some way, offer to give something, you know, uh, one of the things that I did to get myself visible in the beginning part of my uh, first business, it wasn't even screw the cubicle, another completely different business was that I used to actually approach like people, um, that I know are in the industry, but are non-competing and offer to do like free workshops, you know, or offer to go speak for free at their space, right? Or offer to give something of value, like a resource or an article away uh, so that we, you know, we already share the same audience and they very likely would need some valuable content or valuable training and offer that genuinely in order to start building credibility for your work and start being found by an audience uh, that, you haven't built yet, but you know, piggybacking on a, a great partner, a great collaborator, but also making it a win-win situation for you to get visibility and for that person to gain a, a resource or training or, you know, some value for their audience as well. But always look at win-win of how you can contribute without only looking at just digital tactics, right? We always uh, disregard physical communities, our physical environment of where we live, social equity we've built, in the histories of our friendships and our, our professional relationships. And there's definitely people to tap into there. If you have a little pause, just have a think about how you can do this more organically and authentically than hacking the system, right? Constantly. All right, great. Those were excellent questions. And I hope that that was valuable to you for me to answer some of that in depth. Uh, I would love to hear from you. If you were watching this live or on a replay, um, what parts of my advice may have resonated with you that's maybe caused you to do an action differently? I would love to hear that. And maybe what has prompted you to ask me a different question? What can I help you with? And how can I be of service to you uh, in our next Q&A session? Or even sometimes I, I take some of your questions and create a completely um, robust uh, uh, blog post or video blog about it. So your feedback is always necessary. What we do here in terms of content and values also to serve you. So all you have to do is ask and I'll make sure to get your question answered uh, in all the formats and definitely in the Q&A session in the next round. Thank you so very much for joining me. I hope you guys have been having a great week and a great start to your October. Uh, and I'll see you guys in our next session for a Q&A, which will happen next month again. And we'll prompt you again. You'll get a reminder if you click on the Get Reminder button when we schedule it on our Facebook page. Uh, and I would love to hear from you. Have a great rest of your week. Bye, Cubicle Crashers.